you know where the next cable car down is? It's every 15 to 20 minutes. We need to wait on the line, on the front, in the, uh, where ah. the door is, basically. Okay. Can I just get, uh, can I get a bottle of water? Are they, are they cold? Yeah, sure. Yeah, just one bottle Which of water. Size? Um, the Half what liter? sizes are there? The small one, yeah. yeah. Small one, thank you. Alright, so we're going to Telecabine de la Prairie which is another ski lift in this direction. It's about a 10 minutes walk. And I'm not sure how impressive it's going to be compared to the other ones, but it's basically the last one I'm going to do in this area in Le Houge, before going back to La Grille de Midi and going up the top uh, and getting a coffee or something there. And then finally having some food. <laughs> I've been doing intermittent fasting. Look at that abandoned shallow. Anyway, we're about halfway to La Prairie, which is the next ski lift. The weather's still beautiful. Here we are. This one looks like it's running a lot faster. Now from the looks of it, this one, La Prairie, is more for mountain bikers. I've seen a lot of people getting onto this onto the ski lift for their mountain bikes, so I guess there's a Few good trails there. Let's have a look, let's explore. So I'm not actually going to spend much time in this area because I've already seen these views from over there where I was in my last hike. But I thought I might as well just see the ski lift because I've paid for the pass so I might as well see them all. I got some pretty funny looks for coming up here by foot because I think almost all of the people that use that ski lift are mountain bikers. But I guess you can still use it to walk around as well. This must be amazing in winter and for mountain biking and stuff.
know, finished seeing this one. I was only here just to see a few of the hiking trails because I've already been on one before. So now, now I'm going to go, before I go back to La Ville de Midi, I'm going to go and see a lake. There's a lake somewhere near here before I get the bus all the way back to Chamonix. I want to go and see this lake and see what that's all about. But I don't think my feet can take much more walking there, definitely. They're definitely uh, going to have some blisters now. <laughs> Alright, so here we go, here we go on the way back down. It's actually really long, this um, this ski lift is actually a really long journey. It's almost as long as the other one, Le Brevant. But um, I think it is mainly for mountain bikers in the summer. I didn't see anyone else hiking. But that's probably one of the most beautiful hikes I've done in my entire life, up to that. I'll uh, put what it's called in the description when I upload the video, but that was beautiful. Really nice. Really challenging though, because it was steep. It wasn't very, it didn't take very long. It took about half an hour. But it was half an hour of, of uh, solid, like 45 degree incline hiking in the sun. And this is, I'm probably moaning too much because I've already been hiking for a long time, every day, all day. All right, let's go and find that lake. I've just realized I can see the lake already. It's over there. Literally have to just get off the ski lift, walk across and there's a lake, apparently there's a picnic area and people do rock climbing on this rock face here, I think. So I'm gonna get a coffee, look at the rock climbing, look at the lake, and then head up to La Guilde Midi and finally I'm gonna try and get to La Guilde Midi 2, which is the second leg of the Guilde de Midi ski lift, which you can't see because these trees are in the way. And it's gonna be really beautiful, very nice views from there, especially on a day like today, but I'm gonna end up queuing probably for about an hour and a half. Uh, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth when you're here and the weather's like this. It's worth it's worth the wait, I think. This has been a lifesaver. Fruit and nut mix. Well, I found the lake. So I'm going to walk around, see what the rock climbing situation is like, and then potentially go back after that. Well, I guess this is where people do some climbing. I think there's more around the corner, but wow. The whole tree has been uprooted, look at that. Well, I'm looking for a bus stop now. I'm sort of getting used to using the bus, it's very easy, very cheap. And uh, they're all on colour-coded lines, like the metro or the subway, so it's getting easier to use them. I'm also getting used to walking around, believe it or not. Although I am starting to get blisters. I wish I'd bought trainers. I've just got these massive boots, look at that. And I don't think they fit me right. So that's one of the most common reasons people get blisters is their shoes don't fit them. All right, so we're waiting for the line one, La Paz Fleurie, which goes back to Chamonix and then down to where I'm staying. The buses are pretty good, every half an hour essentially. And it's only three euros a day to go anywhere, unlimited journeys in the whole of the Chamonix Valley. So it's actually a pretty good deal. Now, just gotta wait. <laughs> 